What's up everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this brand new Scratch 3 series, you'll be learning how to make a scrolling platformer game. Now since I've not recorded all the videos just as yet, I don't know how long the series will go on but it should probably be around 8 or 9 videos. The full game would contain obstacles, water and lava traps, spikes, coins and a whole lot more. As far as the features of the game are concerned, we'll be having scrolling in both the axes, friction and also wall jumping. Now that's enough for a lengthy introduction, let's get right into our code. So once you've set up your Scratch 3 editor, the first thing you want to do is to delete your cat sprite. And I'm going to paint a new sprite and it's going to be a simple um, square. And this is going to be um, a platformer. So I'm going to paint it with a nice purplish color and I'm going to set the outline to be transparent. Now if you want to zoom in um, like uh, to the image like mine, you can just use the zoom in block right here. And uh, since I have a pretty neat zoomed in image, I think this is going to be an ideal size for our platformer. And I want to make sure that it's centralized pretty well. Alright, so with this out of the way, I'm going to rename this platformer. And after this, I'm going to set up a couple of variables. The first variable is going to be called scrollx, okay? And make sure you set it for all sprites. And just for simplicity sake, all the, you know, for all sprites variables, I'm going to call them in all capital letters. And uh, the smaller uh, and the lowercase letters are going to be used for like local or private variables. All right, so scroll X, that's going to be our first variable. Then I'm going to delete the my variable variable because we don't really need it. And I'm also going to have another variable, which you guessed it, scroll Y. And this is going to keep track of our scroll in the Y axis. And I'm also going to make another global variable and this is going to be called level. And obviously this is going to keep track of the level. So I'm going to hide all those three variables and I'm going to make a couple more local variables. The first one is going to be called xpos, okay? And uh, this is going to hold the position of the, of the particular sprite, in this case the platformer, within like the x-axis. And this is not just within our stages x-axis, but this can be any value. So in case the x value is, um, I mean, it wouldn't be for the platformer because we like keep on resetting it. But for any other sprite, if it's more than 240, for example, then the sprite is actually going to be in the stage and not in the stage at the same time because it's going to be hidden. So that's the exposition. Don't worry too much about it. Just uh, follow me along for now. Um, the next variable, I initially thought it was going to be like x well, but I, as I realized, I didn't even need an x velocity for the platformer. So I'm just going to leave it. So I'm going to call the next one x, uh, I'm sorry, y pause. And oops, I set it for all, uh, all for all sprites by mistake. So I'm going to delete it and make sure it's set for the sprite only. So I'm going to call it Y pause, click OK. And the last one is going to be called Y well. And once again, make sure you set it for the sprite only. OK, perfect. Now what I'm going to do is to duplicate this. And the reason I'm duplicating it is so that, you know, we have all these variables in the new sprite as well. And I don't really think we need a Y position in this um, in this sprite. So I'm just going to delete that. Now head over to the second sprite costume and I'm going to zoom out really, really a lot. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is so that it's pretty easy to draw an obstacle. And by obstacle, I mean like the ground, the blocks and all of that stuff. Okay. So I'm going to just do it in black for now, but we might go ahead and change the color later. So I think, yep, this is a pretty good obstacle and I might want to make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to scroll up this much. And uh, also make sure that everything is centered unless like I specifically tell you not to center it because in that case, we'd want it to go to a particular position. Anyway, I'm going to call this obstacle and uh, that is pretty much it. So now head back to your platformer and uh, this is how you start your code. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to zoom in so that you guys can see a bit better. So when the green flag is clicked, um, I'm going to broadcast two messages. Okay. The first one is going to be called initialize and this is going to initialize all of the sprites. So for instance, um, the platformer is going to initialize at the center and the, um, you know, and the obstacle is going to initialize wherever. So I'm going to call it initialize. And after this, I'm going to broadcast another message and this is going to be called play game. Okay. So the game basically starts at this point. All right, so once you've broadcasted these two messages, now we need to do something when we receive them. And the reason I use broadcast and wait and not just broadcast 
is because this broadcast and wait would wait for the entire code within like a script that starts with when I receive initialize to finish off. While if I just use broadcast, then these two scripts are going to run parallelly. And I don't really want them to run parallelly because in case this script does not finish and this like the script starts right away and we get into the game without even initializing our coordinates properly, then we are gonna have some tricky bugs. So make sure you have that and wait right there. Okay, so when I receive initialize, I'm not sure why I threw that block in there, but when we do receive initialize, we need to set um, three variables. So the first one I'm gonna set, um, not level, but X pos to zero. Then I'm gonna be setting Y pos to zero as well. And I'll also be setting the Y velocity to be zero. So I'm gonna duplicate this one last time and set Y velocity to zero. Perfect. All right, so we got a bit uh, confused there and you don't do it when we receive initialize and this is actually like a custom block. And uh, this block is going to be called begin and this is going to be, um, you know, uh, this block is going to be activated at the beginning of this play game um, a message. So make sure you have it as a function and not when we receive initialize. So when we do receive initialize, um, all we do is um, hide our sprite and go right to the front layer. So I'm gonna grab those two blocks right here. So go to front layer and also a hide, okay? And that is pretty much all we'll be doing when we receive initialize. And since our sprite is hidden, I'm gonna make sure that we show it in begin. So add a show at the end of that. And uh, obviously we need the start of the script, which is when I receive initialize. All right, now once you're done with this, now you can head over to your obstacle or actually I'm just gonna throw in that code right there and uh, we can just have like a show or something like that. So I'm just gonna leave in a show and after this head back to your um, platformer and um, here you need the main like uh, script for when we receive play game. So when I receive play game and uh, here's what you need to do. First grab a forever loop from the control section and within that I want you to put in another forever loop. And you may think, well, what's the purpose of this? And you'd actually be correct, there is no reason for the out of forever loop. If we have a forever loop inside, we could just have like start code. But the reason I'm doing this is because I'll eventually replace the forever loop in uh, here with something that's gonna detect uh, based on the level, which is like a repeat until. And uh, I don't really wanna leave that condition empty, so I will be changing this whole loop itself. All right, so within this uh, forever loop, actually make sure you set level to one right after or uh, right before this. Because in case we don't do that, then the program isn't really gonna know which level it is. So set level to one, and inside this forever loop, I'm gonna have like a new function, okay? And this function, I'm gonna call it engine. And this is, you may think, well, what exactly is the engine? And the engine is going to be, let me specify, I'm gonna call it platformer engine, okay? And this engine is going to be uh, responsible for moving the platformer both in the X axis and the Y axis. And we're not really going to even give an input to our engine, but within our engine, we'll have a set of sub functions, if you want to call it. So uh, just put in like the engine block right there, platformer engine. And after this, I'm going to make another block. And this is going to be called go to coordinates. Okay, and this is responsible for moving the sprite while the engine just gives the coordinates, if you want to put it that way. So I'm gonna click OK once again, and uh, we'll define go to coordinates a little bit later. So uh, add in a go to coordinates right here. And uh, before, um, before these two things, you wanna do um, uh, this thing. So you wanna set scroll X to be X pause. And uh, you'll get why I'm doing this a little bit later. Uh, just do it for now, okay? So once you're done with uh, this, it's time for us to define our platform or engine. So I'm gonna move that uh, block of code away and uh, here's what you need to do. First grab an if then from the control section and here I'm gonna say if right arrow key is pressed, then I'm going to move right. But instead of just saying like change X by eight or something like that, what I'm gonna do is to make a new function. And uh, this is going to be called X engine uh, and that's what I'm gonna call it. And uh, here I'm gonna add in an input, which is going to be like the X velocity. Okay, and this is just gonna be like a constant number, so don't worry too much about it. So once you have X velocity set up, now within our right arrow key is pressed, I'm gonna put in like the X engine and I'm gonna move with a velocity of seven. And seven is going to be positive because uh, if we move seven, we're gonna move right, okay? So um, right here, you wanna duplicate this 
change this to a left arrow and change that to be minus seven. So this is going to be uh, moving the uh, platformer negative seven in the, um, in the uh, X axis. So it's going to move to the left. All right, so that is pretty much all we need in our platformer engine for now. And uh, now we can get into coding our X engine and uh, go to coordinates, coordinates, not coordinate. And uh, before we actually get into um, the X engine though, there's one thing which I forgot to do and that uh, we haven't used this begin function just as yet. So make sure you add in a begin after the first forever loop. And also after this, go to coordinates. The obstacle is gonna have no idea what to do. And since we want our obstacle to be scrolling, uh, we can grab um, a broadcast and wait from the events block once again. And uh, for a new message, I'm gonna call this move obstacle. And uh, after the obstacle is done moving, we can continue with our code. So now let's get into our uh, X engine. So first I'm gonna change the X position um, by the X velocity, which I'm gonna enter in, or I've actually entered in uh, right here, that's seven or negative seven. So I'm gonna change the X position or not set, or uh, change by X velocity. So make sure you do that correctly. If you do set, then you're gonna get a bunch of errors. So change X pause by X well. And uh, after this, you need to um, check in for the walls, okay? And before you do that, uh, I'm gonna edit this block and make sure it's run without a screen refresh. And uh, what this is going to do is, it's gonna wait for your entire script to finish off before it refreshes the screen. And in case we don't have that in, it's gonna refresh the screen for every single line of code. And based on the things which I'm gonna be doing, that isn't really what we want to do and you'll start to get some weird, weird results. So now after this, you wanna grab a repeat until uh, from the control section. And uh, here you wanna type in repeat until not, uh, and follow that up with a touching obstacle. So touching mouse pointer, and you can change that to be obstacle, okay? And uh, within this, I'm gonna check if the X velocity is positive or negative. And there is a, you know, kind of short way of doing this where we can do like absolute value of, um, I'm sorry, X velocity by absolute value of X velocity times negative one. But I'm just gonna have like a simple if else statement, which is probably a little more understandable. So within this if else statement, I'm gonna have a greater than zero or less than zero. I guess I'll put a greater than zero first. So in case the X velocity is greater than zero, well, in this case, it means that uh, the particular platformer is supposed to move towards the right. So in that case, what I wanna do if it is touching an obstacle is to move to the left. So I'm gonna say repeat, uh, I'm gonna change, um, oops, change X pause by negative one. And in case this is not the case, and in case like our X velocity is going to the left and it is negative, then we'll change the X, uh, X position by one. And now keep in mind that we haven't updated the screen just as yet. And by update, I'm not talking about the screen refresh, but about this go to coordinates, which is what is gonna control where we're gonna go. So I'm gonna uh, head over to the events block and put in a go to coordinates here and as well as here. So I'm gonna put in that here, actually here, perfect. All right, so for the last step of this video before we get into our obstacle is this go to coordinates function. And uh, this is going to be pretty simple actually. So what I'm gonna do is say uh, go to, and for the X value, I'm gonna say go to uh, zero, uh, not zero, minus, and uh, for the Y value too, but let's not worry too much about the Y value for now. So within the X value, I'm gonna say go to scroll X, uh, or actually X pause minus scroll X, and that is pretty much going to be it. I think actually since our Y position and our scroll Y is automatically gonna be set to zero, we can have it for our Y value as well, and I don't wanna really type it in again. So I'm gonna say a uh, Y pause minus scroll Y for the Y axis. And what I'm gonna do is to throw in that block of code within the obstacle right there, and I'm not really sure if that went in. So what I'm gonna do is to just put this code in my backpack and then throw it in in the obstacle. So in case you like don't have a backpack because you're using the offline editor, don't worry too much, just like have an, and just uh, copy and put in the code right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is when we receive move obstacle. And in case we do not receive more obstacle, then that does not mean that we should move because it means that this code is executing. So when we receive move obstacle, we're gonna go right here, finish off the script, 
then come right back and then continue with our engine. So what this is going to enable you to do is you can see that our platform is scrolling and for some reason it looks like it's scrolling the wrong way and uh, uh, the reason for that is that we're not moving, um, we're not really moving this paddle right here. It looks like a paddle, but it's really an obstacle. But we're moving the um, pl a platformer. So in case we move to the right, it means that the um, it means that this particular obstacle should move to the left. And uh, just to give you some perspective, I'm gonna make the obstacle go ahead to uh, a little more, you know, like a little more towards the screen like this. And I think it should like update by default and go back up. So what I'm gonna do is to set a Y value for this. I'm gonna set Y, uh, y pause to be something like negative 30, okay? And this is just to give you some perspective right here. And uh, now you can see that when we move the, uh, when we move, I'm pressing the right arrow key right now. You can see that we are kind of moving over our uh, obstacle. And that is pretty neat. Obviously, this isn't the best platformer you can come up with, but it is a good start. And in the next few videos, we'll get into customizing like the Y velocities, the gravities and all of that so that we have a much neater working platformer game. And that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.